I'm going to entertain you for a moment here, Neo. I'm going to do something a little bit differently in this audio. Now, if you hear some noise in the background, that's because, uh, of course, again, there's things that are being done. All right. But we're going to do something that's a little bit differently. That's not going to be so serious. There's going to be some serious topics in this. Yes. There is going to be some... Uh, very interesting subjects that are going to probably wrinkle your nose and it's going to teach you because in this uh, in, in this entertainment there's going to be a lesson as well to be received all right so uh, you know buckle your seat belt and I'm going to do what uh, you know what's going to be unusual and that's just plain entertain you all right but I'm going to start off with uh, several uh, you could say trainings that I went through in real life training to uh, help me to evaluate myself to get my mind on the right track see what you have to understand about Morpheus is that uh, I too had to go through the uh, training simulator that's right but my story was uh, or is a little bit different my story isn't told as in detail as you Neil uh, mine involved uh, real life people. Mine involved uh, every day. Um, I had to study about my own psychology. I had to study about my own energy. I had to face myself and I had to face my own uh, demons. I had to face the devil within myself. I had to face the God and the devil within me. Okay? But first, to get to that point, I had to evaluate what my nature is all about see because I am a man my nature is for a womb man right my nature is for the opposite sex and so I needed to evaluate and study what this opposite sex not only what they are all about but how they can affect me what is my preference what is my ideal woman what is what captures Morpheus's attention? Well, there was a day that came, and I told you I worked, I was around and worked in the medical field. Okay, there was a uh, a case study that I decided to be a part of for my own reason. Okay, and it wasn't anything based on uh, health. It was just based on your mind, your psychology, things like that. So, in a specific hospital somewhere, there was a, uh, a very kind doctor who arranged this wonderful experiment that to this day I can never forget. In this experiment, it was all about evaluating the type of woman that I am interested in. How it would have started first is where the doctor asked me if I was without relationship. I don't consider myself to be single. You would say single um, based on your common uh, reliance or how you convey to someone that you are not with a companion, that you don't have a uh, lover, basically, or you don't have a you're not married. All right. When you say I'm single. OK, uh, I'm not going to get into details with that because there's plenty of people who say they're single, but yet they have late night donkey dunks. All right. They have a friend who is a friend with benefits, which is really that's really their boyfriend. That's really their girlfriend. OK, they just don't want to label them as that. They'll just say that is my friend, but yet I am single. That only means here in the westernized civilization in realistic English, simple language. What they're saying in so many words is um, I I'm going to have my fun and I want to eat it, too. I'm going to sit here and donkey dunk and act as if um, I'm in a relationship. I'm going to get the benefits of the fruits, the cookies and the labor of a relationship. That is the positive labor of relationship. But yet I'm going to wait for the next best thing. So I'm going to eat my cake and I'm going to wait for them to bake another one and put it on the table. That's why you have so many people who are spiritually obese. That's why you have so many people who are mentally obese. That's why you have so much unhealthy relationships because you have people who eat just like that. They're considered as pigs. All right. Now, so I don't I don't talk about single. All right. 
I say I am without a relationship. Relay, that means I'm not donkey dunking. That means I don't have a girlfriend who is considered as realistically a partner. Or she is a somebody who I'm uh, donkey dunking with and just waiting for the next best thing. No, I was talking to no one. I had no one, just particularly no companion. So after I explained that to him, he had a smile on his face. He said, good, because this experiment is going to help you. You put the clipboard down and say, well, that's going to make this class very, very easy. Okay. Now the experiment had to be done with the women being unaware. Okay. Unaware and very harmless. No harm done. Okay. No voyeurism, no destruction, nothing of that nature. Okay. It was based on what I am able or what was able to see with the, uh, with my mind, with my heart, with my natural senses. Okay. So he said, okay, come here, let me show you something. And he set me down in a hallway in this uh, this medical area, this hospital, basically. This is keep it simple, okay? And he said, what I want you to do is just sit here and tell me what you see. Just tell me what you see, okay? And I waited for a while and he purposely made me wait as if to purposely make me forget that I was actually there for a, uh, for a test, okay? Uh, there to uh, um, to see something okay so I'm sitting there for a good 20 25 minutes okay and uh, next thing I know <laughs> next thing I know okay I'm sitting there nurse after nurse after nurse after nurse not male nurses female nurses okay every as to say what was it every two minutes or less than that I would say man it was a uh, yeah, I would say every two minutes, there was a nurse that would walk past. Each nurse had their own uh, energy. They had their own personality. They had their own goals. They had their own idea. They they were all different. And uh, it was kind of funny because the evaluation was I didn't know that I was actually doing it, but the doctor did. Okay, I didn't know that it was naturally happening. So what I saw was I saw uh, I saw one who go down the hallway. She was uncertain of herself. She was looking around and just, you know, thinking like she needs to crawl through the wall to to escape whatever she was doing. And she left. OK, next one walks past and she she seems as if she's somewhat confident, but not so sure of herself. You know, she's trying to straighten up her dress. You know, every five seconds, she's patting her hair. All right. So she she leaves. OK, and not only am I noticing that I'm looking at how they are, uh, how they carry themselves. I'm looking at how much they weigh. I'm looking at how tall they are. You know, I'm looking at um, whether they're brown skin, you know, whether she is a white girl, you know, whether she's Asian, you know, whether she is uh, Indonesian, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this evaluation. I'm just looking. OK, just just paying attention to the details of this. Right. And uh, I see two of them, which pretty much stood out from the Mung's Olive. Well, there, before that, there was another one. Okay, of course, plenty of them. There was one of them, and I don't want to leave these type of details out for you in this entertainment, in this story. Okay, there was a heavy set one who was somewhat confident, but she was just bobbling down the hallway, you know, just muling along, you know, bobbing left and right to get to where she needed to be. And uh, that girl, I could barely notice. I mean, I noticed her because she was uh, she was there, but she was overweight. You know, she wasn't uh, wasn't clearly she wasn't my type. You know, clearly she was just uh, just making it through the day. OK, now, first of all, before I continue to let you know, ladies and people who are listening to this, this is not discrimination. OK, I'm not talking about uh, I'm not judging anyone, nor am I putting anyone down in this audio. OK, contrary to what you may think, this audio is a lesson mechanism for you. OK, this is a through my experience, I am showing you something, OK, as to the title. All right. So don't think it's about saying who's wrong, who's right, what's going on or what's not going on. OK, this is about psychology is the mind is about your spirit and it's about being focused. OK, where it is a sporadic multiplicit partition to a lot of other things. OK, so this girl is uh, she's bobbling down the hallway, you know, of course, I'm not going to pay too much attention to her. Not quite interested at all. Okay. Well, just as to say, not interested to the point to where she didn't even reach the radar. Okay. Then there was another lady who was uh, completely, uh, 
shy you know as if she just wasn't there at all you know her head was always down she seemed hum glum she was uh depressed you know it seemed like she had the world on her shoulder uh she was not one that you would approach to say that um you know hello how are you doing it will be more of are you okay you know what can i do for you why are you feeling sad you know what's going on in your mind type of girl so of course that girl passed by and that energy level was uh it was no good you know i couldn't comply myself to that that wasn't the type of woman that i was interested in at all none of them became that the first few no you know very disappointing now i think the seventh girl the seventh girl who walked past the seventh earth this one i could feel while i was sitting there i was like sitting in a uh, a window ledge it was like a window ledge there's a big window behind me a huge window okay that you would normally have on the on a uh, building or a skyscraper okay in a hospital and it's facing the streets and the road whatever else okay i immediately picked up on this energy this tingling feeling you know in the back of my neck and i'm looking down i'm looking down at a, a pamphlet that was in my hand i look up and she didn't even get in front of me yet she wasn't in front yet she she was walking through the doorway at the time and i noticed that she stepped into the doorway from a good distance away so I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And I'm just watching, watching, just watching. Pretend like I'm not looking, just watching. And the first thing I noticed, the first thing I noticed is that she had her chin up, her shoulders were square, and she had the power of the hips. What that means is real women, okay? And I'm not saying some of you women are not, okay? Just from a uh, alpha red pill man's perspective, I'm gonna tell you what the, the real woman is. Her power wasn't in her shoulders, it was in her hips, and she wasn't trying to bounce her hips left and right. She just did it naturally, because that's where a woman's power is, is down there in her hips. Okay, if you want an example, you can talk about Roger Rabbit, you know, the girl with the red hair. Um, I can't recount what her name was, but the girl with the red hair, you know, the red dress, you know, but she did it a little bit too hard. You know, she was switched as if she's trying to break something. You know, she'll walk down a hallway and, and crack a wall with the way that she was swinging her hips around. Okay, but this girl's hips is like that, you know, for example. Okay, but she was walking quite fast to get to where she needed to be. Whatever destination to do, whatever that her task required. Okay, but she was doing it naturally. Her head was faced forward, her chin was up. And she had a slight smile on her face as if she knew exactly what she was doing, that she knew where she was going. She knew what time of day it was. She was uh, definitely approachable. And um, there would there would have been a decent conversation, an automatic decent conversation in my perception of being able to speak to this lady. And by the way, she carried herself so and to the point where my eyes was glued and she continued to walk and I'm just watching like, okay, what is this? Because it, at that time I wasn't Morpheus. I'm going through my training. I'm going through training classes. Okay, I'm studying, I'm studying this species. What is this girl? What What is this woman thing that makes me feel a certain way? Okay. And uh, it was amazing. You know, that that experience, I said, okay, that that's, I like that. And I put a smile on my face and I'm still thinking about what warm feeling that I felt just watching her confidence walking down the hallway like that. That to me, in my mind, that was a woman like that. That's a woman right there. You know, she I can have a queen like that to help me with my castle. You got to understand as an alpha man or you can say red pill, whatever, you know, my standings or my mindset is based on kingdom building and kingdom uh, protection, kingdom defending and kingdom maintaining. OK, so therefore, if I'm going to have someone who's considered as my life partner or you can say companion, OK, uh, what, contrary to what you think a companion or a partner is, when I call somebody a partner, I'm calling them a team mate. I'm saying somebody who works with me, you know, not a donkey dunk partner, contrary to what you are taught from strange thinking people. OK, partner, meaning someone who partners life with me, someone who can I can pass the baton to. They will run it down the marathon and win for me. You know, I write a check, they go use it. You know, they, they go ahead and pay the bill. Okay. I'll reverse. I give the demands, they execute the demands. All right. A partner. All right. But check this out. I knew immediately, right then and there, that she could be the one. She could be that type of energy, that type of that type of idea. Okay, that good display never left my left, never left my mind after uh there was like two or three other nurses that came after her. They didn't even they didn't even register. 
I didn't even care about how they cure themselves and what type of evaluation I got from them because that girl was still on my mind. I was still thinking about how good it would be for me to be um, stable and sensible and advancing in my life to have somebody like that who is advancing, sensible, and can be just as strong as I am. Or basically, we both are holding up the, the uh, labor and the ends of the table and she won't fumble and make me look bad and vice versa. All right. Now, contrary to, again, what some of you also may think, um, there are some women who go above and beyond that. You know, confidence can be a very dangerous thing when you are confident about the wrong thing. OK, when you when that particular woman thinks that her confidence is based on her college degrees, her confidence is based on her thinking that she's being praised being a single mom. You know, her confidence is because everybody is is trying to uh, get at her and praise her for her looks. You know, and she's on Instagram, Snapchat and all that kind of crazy stuff. And she has a false sense of confidence where she's just being uh, praised and boosted in the wrong sense of thinking. So, yeah, she can also have confidence as well, but it's destructive, toxic con uh, confidence. That's not what I, that's not what I'm talking about with this girl. OK, her confidence was natural. I'm talking about confidence about knowing who you are as a woman. Confidence of being sensible, confidence of being able to peer bond and uh, collaborate as a team member. OK, and be strong enough to defeat the war of this world, you know, because as an alpha man, I would need to be able to fight all the distortions, deceptions and destruction that the new age thinking and generation is offering. So I would need a partner to do the same. I would need a woman just like uh, a Zenith, you know, a Zenith or a Wonder Woman where I am able to unsheath my blade. She would do the same thing and survive because I don't want to always have to look over my shoulders to make sure that she's OK. I don't want to always have to pick her up because she's a fallen soldier. I don't want to always have to uh, carry her in the wagon while I'm fighting everything. She would need to have to pick up her labor and fight as well. And that's there's nothing more attractive to me than a woman that can hold her own and and is completely confident about it. A uh, few minutes after a uh, uh, wait, the waiting period, because there was two more nurses that walked in after her, which uh, couldn't register because I still was thinking about her confidence. You know, that that young lady with the chin up. OK, and it was an older lady, one who is uh, older than myself. OK, and uh, this older lady, she it, she had neither. It wasn't that she didn't have any confidence. She had confidence, but she was a happy woman. She had a very good personality. She was warm and uh, bubbly in her position where she knew what she was doing and everything was just at ease, almost like a well-oiled machine where she stopped for a few minutes to ask me what my name was. And, you know, there's introductions. She smiled and everything. And, oh, hi, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, how you doing? And, you know, good day. Yes, sunny outside. Okay, well, you enjoy yourself and story in it there. Okay. Um, very good feeling, you know, of this older lady. And she was kind of funny with some of her uh, in the conversation. You know, she kind of put a smile on my face as well. So she left a very positive imprint, you know, very positive imprint. And also what caught my attention, she smelled real good. You know, she had she had some type of unique perfume on that worked out well for her personality. So she was she was indeed a good catch. You know, she was indeed a good catch. Not in the the thing that really caught my attention at the time. Now that I look back at it today versus then. OK, I wasn't looking or thinking too much about the age differences. I wasn't red peeled. OK, I wasn't um, aware about uh, all the details of a woman's age and hit the wall and so forth and so on. OK. Not as I am today, but now as I look back at it in my sense of being, I can understand, you know, with my wisdom, I can understand how it's easy for a um, for a younger lady to be attracted to a older man, to a man who was a uh, uh, mature or he got himself settled, especially if this man, he's uh, he's uh, established where he has confidence, where he's cool, he's calm, he's collected, uh, he's funny. You know, he's open minded. He can do what the other girls, I mean, the other girls, what the other guys can't do. You know, he uh, he's been around the world. You know, he has his experience and he's uh, not full. He's not playing games anymore. You know, he's not full of nonsense in his mind. It either is or isn't, you know, and he's open minded. He's not too serious. OK, so what happens is and this is the study for you right now, you know, in the story is that what happens is this man this older man, our older woman, makes herself themselves available 
for a uh, for a younger catch or for um, their compatibility, meaning compatibility, meaning someone who is fun loving, you know, someone who is not so bitter. They're not jaded. Um, they didn't allow the frustrations of the world. You know, they didn't allow their past mistakes. They didn't allow their age to stop them. Um, they didn't allow uh, their religion, their mindset to keep them from living their life where they still have energy. They're still positive. They're still standing there joking, laughing, playing as if they are a 21 year old person. They're just in a more mature body. OK, in my teachings, this is what I tell you on the off. This is what I tell you about health spirituality and being bitter and allowing agent smith to destroy your soul this is generally where i want you to be because what will happen is you allow yourself to be available to be the catch of the pick you allow yourself to be attractive you allow yourself to still have enough juice left over should you decide to re-enter a relationship to re-enter life to uh run faster live longer be healthier have longer hair be stronger smarter you know you're you're doing things now you're driving around the country now you got the money now you got you're established but you still have life to live and you're not bitter nor jaded so therefore you make yourself you make yourself um you make yourself the golden fish out of all the fish i don't mean gold fish not gold fish you make yourself the golden fish out of all the fish because you begin to outshine the rest of them here you are laughing joking you you know you're smart you know you're able to kid make make her laugh or make him laugh okay how could you not be attractive how could they not forget you you're unforgettable especially if you're smelling good got you know you'd be freshly out of the shower or something like that with some ivory soap or musk or whatever you know for some people old spice whatever that you put on you know some some very not strong too strong to make people choke but enough where you got this person still lingering where when they walk you walk away from them it's like your hands is still on their shoulders you're still standing there that's a wonderful thing not only do you have a nice personality not only are you smart and funny you know not only are you bubbly and you sensible and you understanding you know now you you smelling fresh and clean how could i mean that that would that's like uh that's a dime dozen you know that's that's a that's a unicorn type of situation therefore i couldn't forget about her you know she was she was also that's kind of amazing she was just as equivalent as the girl who had confidence walking down the hallway okay she was also compatible but yet she was an older lady she kept herself together enough to be able to peer bond and that is the key to a lot of my lessons as well okay when you allow the world to get you down when you allow your age to beat you up if you have made a lot of mistakes in your life and you want to start all over again but yet you allowed yourself to be jaded you got a nasty attitude you act old you think old you don't want to get out of the house you don't do bowling you don't run you don't jog you don't go to the gym all you do is sit down all day and watch netflix eat donuts go to fast food and honky donk and dumb stuff that you usually do and you sit back and you sit on the bench and you let your children do everything opportunities will not come to you you will not be blessed you are going to allow yourself to be just like that rotted old car that's going to be sitting there and weeds is going to grow in your engine bay okay weeds going to go around your wheels and you're not going to start at 25 years yeah they got some videos stuff like that okay this is a 27 year old car will it start you know they, they got little names for those videos and that's fascinating but you as a human species okay that's going to be a problem because by the time you get off your uh, rocking chair and you start taking care of yourself it's going to be too late by then by then that opportunity they have left by then that younger girl is she's gone she ain't going to be with you 24 23 25 year old girl she's going to find somebody else okay by that time that that younger man 27 28 32 40 something like that and you might be 50 who knows you know whatever the age difference is he's going to find somebody else. he's going to look at you like a bitter old granny you're old i can't deal with you nah you ain't nah you ain't down you're not down you know you're not you're not it you're not it okay it's not working here you too ratchet for me same as what the woman would think nah you nah uh uh you don't you don't roll like that i ain't nah i ain't got time for you i don't need a daddy you know i don't i don't need a grandpa to be my uh uh my boyfriend i don't want to be walking down uh, the the mall with grandpa because you let you act like grandpa think like grandpa lazy like grandpa okay and need a cane like grandpa because you allowed your life you allowed life to beat you up
You allowed your circumstances to make you bitter. You allowed Agent Smith to take the life out of you like a battery. And now you're useless to yourself because you didn't leave the plantation until late. You left the plantation late. Okay. And now you try and start life all over again. Forget it. Forget it. It's done. It's a done deal. When people tell you to take care of your health, they mean it. When people tell you, the doctor tell you of doctor of spirituality, that would be me. <laughs> when I tell you to take care of your spirit, okay, I mean it for a reason. When I say take care of your mind, I mean it for a reason because you're going to need it one of these days. It worked on me. I was younger than a lady and I'm sitting there like, wow, she is attractive. All she would have had to say was, you know, hey, you know, you, you got the time in the day. I would say absolutely. 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 All you got to do is to say when, where, when, where I'll be there. OK, done deal, because it's positive energy. I could get something out of that. I could grow myself by being with somebody with a positive energy, somebody who can make me laugh, somebody who is sensible, someone who can peer bond, even at that age, still can peer bond. I feel like I'm with somebody who's at my age, if if not younger, with her positive joking and, and funny just position. You know, her being sensible and easy going, there's nothing better than being easy going. I mean, that's really that's really the golden ticket there. She's an easy going gal, <laughs> easy going like, wow, amazing. Because that's generally what men would want anyway, is a woman not to compile his day with stress, but to alleviate that stress, to take stress away, make his day easier, put a smile on his face. You know, go go pick up something funny, you know, do some interesting, bring a twist in his world that he was least expecting. So she become the prize. She become the prize or you could say a benefit to his life. OK, so this girl passes. Right. Then uh, one of the few girls out of the few girls that I can pretty much remember. OK, because it was like three or four of them again. Yes, yeah, it, was, it was. I was sitting there for a while. Trust me. Um. Cause he said for me to sit there and wait anyway till he came back so i couldn't go nowhere anyway i mean not to say i was obedient because i'm never the obedient type i'm sitting there entertained because these girls was walking past okay he knew what he was doing anyway one of them had an attitude you can tell now of course that's assuming you'll say okay morpheus now you're just assuming now you are just guessing that she had attitude well Let's go by perception and energy, because when you have your third eye and you have your instincts, you can pick up on negative energy, just like the positive energy of the girl who's at the doorstep. I can pick up on it. OK, I can also pick up on evil energy. I could pick up on negative energy. You don't have to know the person. Just figure you can feel it like, man, something's wrong with you. OK, then they open up their mouth and it's like dragon, dragon breath. Oh, you know, they get you. You know, you're like, OK, I see why now. Then they tell you about all their problems in the day that they couldn't solve because they were using emotions instead of logic. OK, however, this girl had an attitude, you know, no smile on her face, little little scrowl. You know, look, she's mumbling to herself a little bit, looked like she just wanted to just, you know, leave. She didn't want to be at work that day, unlike the first girl who just didn't want to be there because she felt like she was confused. This girl really looked like if you approached her, she would she if I would have approached her, OK, she would have. Uh, she would have cursed me out just for approaching just by saying hello because she probably wouldn't even responded back you know who are you what do you want you know what what you want you know so she had this little i'm looking like okay well maybe she might have a different personality at home maybe she's going through something right now but she's not approachable you know her energy is no good couldn't deal with that okay when people tell you attitude is everything all right they mean that attitude does it is everything it it will tether to your success it will tether to how many people are going to approach you or figure you to be approachable when you have a smile on your face even if you're going through something you got a smile on your face and you are a uh, a giddy up type of person most likely you're going to gather a crowd people are going to want to come to you and you're going to be like why you know wow all these people just you know talking to me this, this stranger just came from this this aisle you know here i am picking up fruits and vegetables and <laughs> somebody came from nowhere and just start talking to me I don't even know that person. You got a smile on your face. You know, you walk around like life is OK. It may not be good. It's not good for everybody. Everybody's going through something. Everybody has some type of fear or struggle and responsibilities. But when you are able to stand there and you got a positive, you got a positive energy. OK, positive attracts positive. 
you know, and uh, be weary because I'm going to teach you some of the things in the future that positive can also attract negativity because there's negative vampires that want your positive energy. So you can attract negative energy, negative people who want to take your positive energy and use it for themselves and leave you negative. So the instructor slash doctor slash teacher <laughs> at that time, um, after a few minutes, he ended up coming through the hallway with his little clipboard and he sat down and he started rubbing his palms. And uh, he said very calmly, you know, with his uh, dark black glasses on, he had like glasses on, had like a dark frame, never forget. He said, so uh, did you learn anything? I'm thinking, uh, what do you, what, what do you mean? You know, that. Did you see anything you like? And I start chuckling to myself and I was thinking about the woman with confidence who walked through the hallway. I didn't want to say that in that professional, you know, circle and, you know, seem like a creep in the eyes of women. You know, I just wanted to be calm and cool. I just kept that joke to myself. I said, yeah, I saw something I like. I, yeah, I like that. He was like, come on, you can tell me, you know, gave me a little hunch with his shoulder. I said, That's what you're here for. Did you see anything you like? Did you learn something? I said, yeah. You know, and I start talking about women with confidence. And before I even went down that path, you know, he put his hand and be like, yeah, that's why I put you here. You know, I wanted you to see the differences there. And say, so, you know what, these these girls, I had them do a task. They was actually going to get something, you know, for me down a certain a certain wing here. There's a certain wing that they have supplies down this way. OK, and there's a door that they can walk back to get back to the, uh, you know, to the area in which, you know, operations stuff is being done. OK, he said they had no clue that you were sitting here looking at them. But however, I purposely did that so you can have an evaluation so you can learn something from this. OK, and he said there's nothing better than for you to see a person in their natural state of mind. None of the girls were acting. None of them was putting on a show. None of them was pretending. None of them was trying to say, you know, OK, we realize that Mr. C is sitting here and they're trying. OK. Because, you know, there may be a few that has boyfriends, they might be married, they might be going through something at home, who knows? It wasn't that type of story, it wasn't that type of game. There's nothing better than to see something in its natural habitat. You know, just repeat myself again, so you can have that good clarity of how learning and teaching should be done. And he said, well, so, uh, so you like this, uh, this girl of confidence, okay? You know, rigid backbone, he said, then he said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, listen, what you're seeing is actually yourself. He said, listen, now, the, the mind of a woman is different than the mind of a man. OK, the psychology is a little different. You know, they are a bundle of, of chemistry. You know, you're a bundle of thoughts, you know, of logic. Now, if you twist that coin upside down, look at them as you and you are the girl right now. OK, evaluate. And uh, if you want to find that person that you are interested in, since you are, you know, you don't have no companion, uh, look at them as you and you are the girl. And what will happen is you are actually able to see what that girl can see. You're able to see what that woman can see in you. So if you walk down the hallway as whatever you've experienced, then that's what you're going to be giving them to her. You know, whether it might be confidence or no confidence. OK, so you have the ability to see what you can do for yourself if you want to find the right companion or person. He said, well, that means you have learned something today. So maybe you can take that into your um, into your future. You know, and let's carry on to our next program, blah, 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 so forth and so on. OK. And um, I sound of my voice, you know, Neo, uh, ever since then, uh, there has been a a, a uh, awareness, a switch that's been turned on, you know, within me to see how uh, pe how people can visualize you even from afar. And and it's not just prejudging a person before you meet them. Oftentimes when they are in their natural state of being, that's who they are. OK, when you have to tell a person to do something and then you give them a reward for doing a certain thing or you tell them to apply to your principles, or your ideas. Um, they're going to do it for a short amount of time because they want your benefits. They want your attention. They want your help or whatever it might be. OK, so there is a two double edged sword here in this lesson as well. OK, where I would often tell you if the girl doesn't line up to the principal, I'm not interested in her. So to speak, the door will be slamming in her face. OK, 
then I will also tell you if you are confused that um, you'll let that flower grow on its own. Let them be who they are. And uh, it's okay to accept them that way if you choose to or to neglect them because they are real. Okay, so don't confuse yourself, right? The idea is this, you have a principle, you have a standard of what is good for you, what attracts you, what's good for your life, what motivates you, what will make you, uh, what will support you? Is this girl gonna be good for you in your future? All right, is she going to be the thing that's going to put the fire um, underneath your uh, hotter balloon and get you somewhere or fueling your jet? Okay, but at the meantime, you will state, you will make it clear, you should actually say, hey, this is what I do, this is what I do not do, this is what I accept, this is what I don't accept. Okay, if we're going to come together, if you're going to be in my world, if you want to be my uh, companion, okay, I have a different perspective of life. You don't have to line up with it. You don't have to be a part of my program. I accept you to be you. Be yourself, okay? Be yourself. Be free to do whatever you choose to, whatever free will. But if you decide to come over here on this fence, you know, in my kingdom, if I, if I lower the bridge for you, okay there are standards over here okay and when you state those standards it's not sitting down at a dinner table and and pulling out a piece of paper okay you don't sit there like point dexter and act like you are an interview okay you deal with that person on an everyday life you deal with them naturally where when they come across it and trust me it has worked for me many times you say well morpheus why do you have a companion now there's many i will i will share that with you in the future Okay, it's because most most of it is based on being red peel. Okay, most of it is based on understanding that uh, that the river is tainted, it's toxic and it's spoiled, and uh, that's no place for me to uh, live. I don't know. I can put my village on the edge of a poison river. Okay, I got to shower in it. I got to I got to eat from it. Okay, I got to cleanse myself in that in that river, and that's not a wise investment. Okay, I'd rather travel somewhere else in, in dry land and uh, in tropical areas and, and get uh, water from small ponds and cactuses first before I poison myself in my whole village. Okay. However, so the, the measure is this. When you're living your everyday life and you're dating that person and that person is uh, available to be your friend whether it might be donkey dunking or you expect them to be more, you let them be them. Should you come across something that they don't, they're not, they not do it right, that you don't agree with, you address it right then and there immediately. You don't immediately bombard them with who you are and what you are. They will never enter to your kingdom. They will dump you before they even get into a relationship with you and you will never hear anything from them. They will ghost you before you can even spell the word. OK, you let them be them. And when you come across that situation, that's when you address it. You know, if they are dressing a certain way before they approach you or before they leave the house, that's when you say, I do not approve of. I don't like that. You shouldn't do it. Should they continue, then you know that they are not a part of your world. Then you need to start cutting them off. You need to let them know. No, nah, you do you. I'm not going to control you but you're not going to get the benefits that you are wanting from this relationship. Okay. And the more they go against your principles, the more they do not respect you, the more they cause havoc in your life, the more you put them at a distance or you put them out, the more you lock the doors and you change the locks or you just simply replace them for somebody else. Okay. It's just that easy. When they begin to ask you why, you explain to them because I don't live this way. I don't live that like that. I don't appreciate this. That's not my thought pattern. Do that somewhere else. Okay. If you want to be here, if you want to be with me, that doesn't work here. Okay. This is a different infrastructure altogether. Therefore, step after step, your companion or that person will begin to understand what you tolerate and what you do not tolerate. It's just that a lot of you do not do that. What you'll do is let them skip one, skip another one and continue to bombard you to the point where you hate this person after a time. Or you marry them and you look at them as small red flags. You look at them as little bitty seeds that just irritate you for the moment. But then when you get a chance to know them months to years later, 
that little seed becomes the very thing that destroys your relationship because you just kept going on and on and on. Instead of step by step, you know yourself. But the problem is, here it is. Okay, and I understand. Let's be calm about this. People get together and they don't even know themselves. They're not at their best, but they expect to have a best companion. When you're not at your best, you're not going to see nor receive your best companion. It's not going to happen because you may meet that person. They may have the ability to be compatible for you, but you are not compatible for yourself because you don't know yourself yet. You don't know the tools, your mentality or your mindset that is either applicable or not. It is a it is a accent to the relationship or is a decline declined denied you don't know that but once you do you know your 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 uh your strengths and your weaknesses once you know your own measure once you have studied you and you are the best that you could be then you have a flawless victory you you pretty much you pretty much have a full range of being able to either find that right companion that right person make it happen or filter out those who are not compatible for you where you end up finding one percent of quality out of 100 <laughs> percent okay 99 99 of them will be gone only one might stand okay but that's good but that just might be your only options that just may be your only uh what people will say destiny on earth but you still have to stand on your square and your principles and not cave in. Some of you are wondering how did that work there after the uh, the uh, training that I had with that doctor and what was the whole what was the whole point of it? It was uh, self discovery and understanding. It was for internal learning and psychology. Okay, um, it has worked quite well. As a matter of fact, I have used um, the uh, the girl with confidence. And the bubbly woman with uh, good personality and open and and uh, uh, funniness as a very good platform in my beginning phases of re actually transforming into alpha and being the best man that I can be. OK, and uh, it has worked perfectly to the point where that confidence have attracted a lot of women. OK, where it's to the point where, uh, well, let's say it was to the point Um when I was, uh, uh, some people say in the game like that, I don't play games anymore, um, where they will actually say, oh, you just think you the stuff, huh? And I say, yep, I am. You're just so full of confidence. You just come out here. You just do whatever you want to do. You know, who you think you are? I'm like, yep, I'm me. And uh, deal with it or you don't, you know, with such confidence, such such masculinity. And the masculinity was always there, okay? It was always the um not taking a second seat you know not uh sitting there allowing somebody to tell me what it was i would take the man i would say what it is and i would have the masculinity you know i would have the girth the ability the mindset and the wisdom as well as a natural man okay but just with that same confidence it was an addiction for most people in my environment where it was also an envy of others you have you will have people think that you think that you're the stuff okay you have those who try to challenge you you have other and it's called jealousy that's what it's called it's called jealousy and envy what will happen is you have a group of people who don't have any confidence and they want to bring you down you see you have a group of people who love misery misery love company and uh because they're not confident they're unsure about themselves they need people to uh they need to hold somebody's hand they need daddy and mommy okay when you don't you know and you flying high you are the eagle okay uh those people don't like you they don't like that you are successful and that you're getting somewhere because you know your own they don't know their own so what they want to do is bring you down to their nonsense they want to bring you down to their emptiness so what they will do is they will try to bash your appearance um let me give you an experience one uh, there was another experience with this and um i'm gonna tell you what happened i think i told you this before but i'm gonna tell you again uh, I decided to get some cardiovascular workout one night. I got a feeling this this audio is going to be two based. This is going to be part one. I'm going to make a part two because I got other things to share with you. And uh, again, you know, it's learning with entertainment and stories. All right. So you're going to learn something from it. So get prepared for part two. Anyway. So uh, I decided to go to a skating ring to get my breathing on. All right. And. Uh, I walk in there with my tank top shirt on and uh, with all 
confidence and just being me, you know, not letting anything get me down. Chest is burly. You know, when I step when I stepped onto the scene on a usual basis, I'm noticed immediately because my head's not I'm not uh, what do you call that? My head's not looking down. I don't look like I'm lost. OK, I'm not looking around hoping that somebody's looking at me. I can care less if they're looking or not. OK, I don't walk as if I got a slump to my leg. Um, I'm not walking as if I'm, I'm cool, cool Joe Mujo, you know, I got this, you know, type of swagger, you know, like a gold ring on, I've just got this little pimp walk. No, straightforward, simple chin up, same thing as that girl moving forward, right? Not giving a dog don't care about what's around me. Okay. And it works like a magnet. And usually when I do that, I notice that people just can't stop staring. It's not because I got dirty clothes on. I got guacamole in my teeth. Or they, I stink from a distance from the gym. No, absolutely not. Oftentimes it's because they're interested because I'm outshining the rest of them. No different than how that girl was able to make all the rest of those females look invincible as if they never existed. That confident energy is addictive, men. Okay? That doesn't mean you can be uh, confident and you're stupid. That's a different story. It's a different story being confident and you don't know yourself and you don't got two pennies to rub together and you're living in your mom's house. You can be confident all you want to. OK, it's not going to help you being confident when you have your life together, your mind in the right place, when you know what you want, et cetera, et cetera. OK, your feet is planted square on the ground and you're not a hopeful person. You are a doing person. All right. So I get in there and I'm just walking. Right. And I got my skates in my hand looking forward sunglasses on cool as a cat right and i get into these lockers that was uh you know the, the lockers was like side by side sort of and uh there was another group of people that was on the other side of the lockers and there was three girls that was with this one guy okay and uh i i paused to go where the uh the faucet was there was a water faucet over there i won't go and drink the nasty tap water there's a mirror over there i want to see if if my face and my hair was looking good, not conceited. Just want to make sure I'm okay. Why are people staring at me type of thing, right? I really didn't care anyway, making sure that I was okay, straightened out, right? So I walked back over there and I noticed that their eyes was glued still. And the girl, I can hear her. I actually heard her from the other side talking about, dang, who is he? And I thought, who is he coming? Where's the girlfriend at? And the other girl that was with her apparently was her female friend. Some of you men got to understand women talk. OK, they they'll say that stuff. They won't say it to your face. But when you are at a distance, OK, and you are a good looking man, they will give you props. They will talk about you in a good way. You know, they will be like, dang, who is he? Oh, oh, my God. Look at that. Like, Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Dang, you know, that? yeah. Yeah. Oh, we smell all good and stuff. Shoot, girl, look at that. Oh, oh my, you see that? Dang, I'm about to dump my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> I'm glad my boyfriend. Oh, let me holler at him. Let me see what he. Let me see what he working with. Uh, let me see what he working with. They will trust me. They will do that. They will do that. I've been in that situation. I've sat with girls like that, who will see some guy and uh, she she go at him like that. You know, it's not because that guy was better than me. I've, I was already pretty much dealing with something at that time. They knew that I was off the, uh, I was unavailable. So, you know, they was, they was uh, fishing for something else. So I heard what they were saying. But here's the catch here. It's not about them. Okay. I had no problem with the women. You know, I already know what they were staring at, what they want, what time it is. Okay. If I said, let's go, they would have said, how high, where are we going? You know, let's do it. However, um, what the guy said really upset me, but I had to keep my mouth shut because it took all the God in me not to reach through the locker. OK, and pull him through the locks itself like a noodle. OK, but I had to be nice about it because it was metal lockers and uh, I'm not trying to condone any violence. OK, I can do a lot with everything with my skills. OK, that he would have been in trouble, but I'm just calm. Right. I'm changing my skate, my shoes to my skates and i hear him over there oh you don't want to mess with that guy that guy he's uh you know he messed with other guys you know he don't like women he's uh he's he's feminine you know he's sensitive you know he no you know i heard some next stuff about him he ain't no good and he he's just uh he's flamboyant the girls was like what what do you mean what are you kidding me he's like that you know he's like that he's like that and i was just 
I can believe my ears. Well, it's not belief. I was surprised as to what I heard this dude to say something like that. You would say, you would think, well, you should go over there as Alpha and correct him immediately and correct your reputation in front of these, uh, these two or three beautiful girls. Let them know that you don't get down like that. Okay, this is a lesson. This is a lesson. Listen carefully. No, I did not. I sat there and said, okay, I'm going to continue. Because first of all, I know me. Yes, I am logical. Yes, as a professor and teacher, I don't mind sitting there just talking to you. I don't have to put my hands on you. I don't need to. Okay. But at the time of my life, I'm at zero tolerance. I don't have time to even sit there and try to, uh, what do you call that? Try to polish my reputation. I don't need to. To me, he was a child and he was jealous and he was envious that these girls was attracted to me. And he's sitting there. Uh, they wasn't even staring at him. He was actually the sense the one skinny. You know, he was insignificant. He was uh, just <laughs> small, short. OK, uh, clothes was raggedy. But they weren't looking at him. He was an alpha dude. You know, he was blue pill scent. Of course, he was with them. Anyway, uh, I'm alpha, you know, just free. I'm an eagle. Right. But anyway, get to this point. So I walked away and I thought about the interaction. And here's the lesson of the matter. I wasn't worried about simply what he was just saying. I was uh, thinking about the women themselves, because if they were any future prospects, anything important besides donkey dunking, all they would have had to do was approach and ask. Asking is the most powerful thing that you could ever do. Ask women, ask men, ask the question. If you ever deal with people who assume based on rumor, okay, they will destroy your life. Do not be around people who are going to go by rumor and think that it is factual and actual. While I was standing there, I was like, OK, all they have to do is ask me. That's all they got to do. Let's see. If, let's see what type of interaction that we have. Let's see if they will approach anyway and see what uh, that nasty, retarded uh, blue pill simp, you know, monkey. I ain't going to go there. I'm trying to keep my mouth shut. This retarded dude. OK, said, OK, I would have been able to evaluate them if they were to ask me the question and I want to straighten it out immediately. You don't go to somebody else for your information. You go directly to the source. Go to the person. If somebody's talking, if somebody's talking bad about somebody, do this, say, oh, you telling me, why don't you go to them? Why are you telling me about this? Go to the source of the problem. Don't rumorize about these people or that person. Why don't you go to them? Ask them. Don't make don't let me tell you about what's going on in this person's life. Let them tell you from the mule's mouth itself so you can get the facts. Only the person themselves can tell you yay or nay. I can only say yes or no. You know, yes, I'm that way. No, I'm not that way. OK, so the psychological evaluation was very simple. That let me know exactly what type of girls they were. And I don't need to pretend. Listen, when I tell you my other audio, I don't need to prove a daggone thing. I don't have to. Truth proves itself. And as a real dude, okay, as a man who's confident in my skin, I never have to defend myself. Don't need to. Because it either is or it isn't because I'm not going to put myself in a position where I feel like I need to prove myself. Because when you feel like you need to prove yourself, that means you need to prove something that you may, it may actually be true. That you may actually be weak. You may actually be pathetic. It may be, it may be right. You know, you may be trying to cover up something when you're trying to prove yourself. But when you stand in there silent and your hands is clapped in front of you and you as cool as a cat, okay, that's confidence. You letting it be as it is because you don't have to prove nothing and you see reality for what it is. So I'm standing there thinking, okay, if they say, listen, if they want to spend some time with me, me take them somewhere and uh, you know me, <laughs> okay, uh, have lunch both ways. OK, uh, I would have done so. I would have made that uh, availability for them, you know, if all they had to do was just ask me, hey, Mr. C or who are you, you know, you so and so. So I heard this and that. Is it true? The moment they asked that question and I'm able to tell them yes or no, I would have said, absolutely. I can put you on my schedule. You are worth my time because you are using your logic. You got a head on your shoulders and you're not going to be a problem for my life. 
That's how you men and people got to think because you can filter out the BS. You can filter out people who can destroy you. You can take control of your dating scale and scheme when you find people who are going to be sensible. That's how you get rid of the vampires versus those who are going to support you. That's how you can find people who's, who's going to either be a problem for you or who's going to help and support you immediately right then and there. But the very fact that they did not ask the question, the very fact that they allowed this punk boy to deceive them and to gossip and to limit them from their success from Morpheus, from Morpheus's benefits, from Morpheus's uh, uh, taking them to a uh, taking them out of town. OK. And, uh, you know, you know what comes after that. OK. They allowed themselves to be limited. They allowed themselves to be deceived. They allowed themselves to miss out on a good opportunity. I didn't miss out. I wasn't thinking, you know, man, I could have had two or three women right now. And uh, man, I'm missing out. No, 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 man, no, no. I immediately said to myself, they're missing out. I'm not missing out. They missed out on their opportunity. All they had to do is open up their God mouth that easy that easy don't sit there men and ladies and let somebody gossip and spit nonsense in your ear don't let don't even go by it don't even listen to well oh, yeah okay whatever take it as a grain of salt just look at bill yeah it's nothing go to the mule itself go to the source and ask them say hey you know somebody said this is it true i can guarantee you i can guarantee you that you're going to get either the right version of the story are you going to get a uh, an evolution and a revel? You, well, I can't even say the word. You're going to get a uh, enlightenment of the story, and it's going to put you on the right path. And you're going to see that those people who are around you are snakes. They are parasites, and not only do they parasite off of others, they're parasiting off of you and your negative gossip. So therefore, you are around a cesspool of evil. Simple as that. So therefore, you can not waste your time. Don't have to waste your time. Here's the lesson on this one. And sometimes I have to catch myself. I correct Morpheus corrects himself. OK, I've had to correct myself on occasions where um, a person will come to me and tell me about another person. OK, and um, and I will usually tell them to go to that person and deal with it with them. You know, tell them about how you feel. And of course, they would shy away. They would, uh, you know, they, they want to be passive about it. OK, and I myself have slipped up a few times where I want to say the same thing about a person. OK, whether it might be good or bad. And then I have to correct myself and step on my own toes and say, wait a minute. Uh, 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 uh. No, you don't, Morpheus. If you can't talk to the person about what you're getting ready to say. Don't talk about them behind their back. Don't even let it come out of your mouth. If you can't go to them and tell them about how you think or feel about them. OK, don't you dare talk about them to somebody else. OK, so now I'm at the habit and a good habit to where I can speak to somebody and say, yep, I'm saying this because I already told that to that person. I told them they know about what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, uh -huh. I, I just spoke to them five minutes ago. They know this. You know what I'm saying now, they are accustomed to. They have they have full reign. They know exactly what I think right now. OK, therefore, you don't have nasty rumor and gossip. Therefore, you're not becoming an agent of parasitic uh, retardation for yourself or others. OK, straightforward, honest and simple. Now, I'm going to have to make part two because this lesson is not over. Um, there is still more to add to that. OK, so hang tight. And the next video will come for you in just a little bit.